One. Okay, so I'm really excited today to be joined by our Department of Information Technology and Decision Sciences. I have the chair, Dr. Dave Skippers, and I have Professor Chris Hyden, and I have Professor Javad Kitabi, and I'm so excited to talk about a question that is really important in today's professional careers with data. What is the difference between data science and data analytics and why this is so important? So Dave, tell us a little bit about why this question is so important and what you have seen working with industry partners. So yeah, working with industry partners, uh, they very clearly indicated that even people who've received degrees, I'll say from other institutions, we'll use that term, um, don't always understand what is the difference between data analytics and data science. The, the, I'll say the, the industry partners who understand that, they very much are looking for people to be able to answer this question. It's very simple and I'll, I'll, I'll state it this way. Um, data analytics is solving problems with data, all right? Data science is solving data problems, all right? A little bit of a twist on the words there. Um, those are two very different approaches. And I'll say, and I'll throw it back to you to move it on to another speaker to be able to dig into that a little bit yeah. more. Okay, so that is so critical. So I did not know that either. Like, do you know the difference between data science and data analytics? And you just delivered to us a very clear answer. So Javad, tell us a little bit about then what is the difference between solving problems with data and solving data problems? Okay, uh, to build on what uh, Dave just explained, I'm gonna uh, differentiate between data science and data analytics from perspective of a couple examples. One, the type of data that Amazon collects on a daily basis. I'm also gonna compare and contrast that to an autonomous vehicle in terms of the volume and the type of information that it needs to process before hitting a pedestrian, slamming on the brake autonomously. These are examples of big data. Big data have certain characteristics. In academic, there are called the V's of big data, the volume, the size of the data. Variety, in terms of uh, when you look at uh, uh, Amazon, uh, what type of data they collect, sales data, the type of uh, transactional data into, uh, for processing, transaction, there are a variety of them. And also uh, the velocity of the data. This has to do with how fast data is generated and uh, retrieved, analyzed by the user. There are other Vs, which I won't get into, but there is velocity, <laughs> ability, and most importantly, the value of it taking the information and uh, translating it into value. Now, when you look at big data in the context of what Dave uh, uh, explained, there are data problems. Managing that data in the case of uh, uh, Amazon dispersed geographically throughout the world. Computers that have all these data located and they need to be funneled to the user so they can use it and analyze it. That poses a problem mm -hmm. in terms of data management itself. What type of uh, distributed system would you have, computer distributed system would you have that effectively manages this data? So where there is a need by a user to extract that information efficiently that data is provided to the user. Okay, now Javad, you said something really, well, you said so many things that were really critical here. Let's use this Amazon example. So when I'm shopping on Amazon, Amazon is creating kind of like a profile on me as far as what I've purchased. And then I've noticed at the bottom, it will say, and other users that have bought this, this is what we'd recommend. So is that an example of data science or is that an example of data analytics? That's an example of different types of data that it needs to be stored. To answer your question, managing that data is, creates data problems, which is data science. 
Wow. So, I wish a lot hand, of people didn't know that. I love that though. Okay, yeah. go ahead. But on the other hand, now imagine you have solved the data problem. You have enabled a system that efficiently provides the user of that data the information. Then the user of that data needs to use analytical methods, including statistical methods, to transform the data into business intelligence so that data-driven decision can be made. That's data analytics. That's oh, why they said, they've said, okay, well, data problems, how I'm going to manage it, and uh, data analytics. Now that I got the data, what am I going to do with it? I'm going to use analytical methods, the right ones, to transform the data into business intelligence. That makes such sense. So it really is intertwined. It's really part of a synergistic system, but it's important to know each component so that if you have to analyze or you have to evaluate something in that process, you know where to go. That's perfect. So Chris, talk to us a little bit then about the careers. I mean, we just talked about Amazon. So that's that's key, right? Because anybody in marketing and anybody with you know e-commerce, that's so important. But share with us two or three highlights of careers students can do in either area. And then tell us, does Walsh teach us both? To start out, yes, Walsh teaches both, so I'll get ahead of myself <clears throat> as of knowing the insides and out of the MSDA and then the MSIT and data science. But going back, not into specific career titles, but kind of bridging that gap between the, solving the problem and solving problems with the data itself. The data scientist is going <clears> to <throat> have really draw upon uh, several different uh, tech, uh, te technical background, backgrounds and um, and skill sets. And so they have to be versed in different areas such as mathematics, um, or statistics and computer science for the programming portion and understand databases. So when they're presented with multiple uh, data sources and data entry points, they, they're able to be able to, to look at and somehow um, bring that, you know, clean that data up and somehow transform it into something useful. Whereas the person that's gonna be in the data analytics uh, setting is gonna, <clears throat> is gonna be at a different level where they're looking at looking at for the trends, they're looking at solving problems that are identified through their intimate knowledge of like the business domain that they're dealing with. <clears throat> Excuse That's me. Great. That's great. And then Dave, bring us home a little bit. You don't have to say names because I know these are big corporations, but just give us the kind of the broad industries for the industry partners you talk with. Because one of the beautiful things about Walsh's programs, you know, the MSDA, the MSIT and data analytics and information tech is that we have industry professionals that sit on your advisory <clears throat> to advise and consult. So what industries are you seeing, you know, kind of represented on that just generally? And then if you have any other feedback that you heard specifically on this topic, so we can really bring home the importance for people that are considering careers in these areas. Yeah, I'll speak. So our advisory board has representation from different industries across the region. Uh, I'll speak to specifically, so like the financial markets in, in financial businesses, there's obviously some big presence, we'll say within Detroit, you can guess who I'm talking about. I'm not going to necessarily name them. But there's that. Um, you have, you know, large, so the automotive sector is using both data science and data analytics. I mean, you have um, the large automotive sector. They have entire, you know, divisions in, le in groups that are doing data science, data analytics. So, and, and it's somewhat embedded um, in different groups within those. Um, so you have, we also have, and in, in, I'm sure I've brought this up in many other videos, but I'll bring it up again. Um, so industry 4.0, which is poised to, I'll say, shape manufacturing at a core level, they're going to have, so the data deluge, we, so the amount of big data that has happened is, I, I'm beginning to say we have not seen that yet. What we have seen so far will pale in com comparison to what is coming. Um, so data, and I'll drift slightly into all of our systems from a society and from all these different industries are converging. The data is, data is going to start being moved back and forth between industries. We actually recently had a call with a group that's asking us to assist them um, to help develop their data science and data analytics skills. They're looking at bringing in third-party data sets that they don't even own in order to try to glean new insights. I've seen um, data analytics and data science being used in um, medical research to predict when um, seizures are going to happen 
I mean, so this is, this is bridging all industries. And as we get more and more data, it will continue to move out into all. I, I know that sounds, um, I'll say, so pretty big and anomalous, but the other thing in the other area that I see growing is gonna continue to use this um, and, and expand it considerably is, so the military in the defense sector, Michigan has a large uh, presence within that. That's actually our third largest industry within the state. Most people are unaware of that. Um, and they're continuing to expand um, both from the government agencies that are contracting as well as the, I'll say the tier ones and stuff that they're supplying them. So it's big, it's growing, it's virtually pretty much every industry out there. The question is where are they at in adoption? And I'll say the interesting thing as uh, I'll say, I've worked with some industry people, even industry people are struggling with what is the difference between data analytics and science and how do we grow and mature our skills within that. So it's, we're at the beginning phases, even though data science and data analytics has been around for a while, right? Um, it's still gonna grow. I, I think it's gonna explode at levels that most people are unaware. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think that's what we're just seeing is just, it's, it's just coming in like crazy. And also what's nice is that Walsh College teaches the difference so that our graduates go out there well-prepared, they know the difference and they know how to apply it in the workplace right away. So thank you so much for joining and for sharing all this. It's such valuable information. Now we know the difference between data science and data analytics and how to use them both in the big data world.